Hey guys, so over the years in the Total War franchise, Creative Assembly has naturally added new features and innovated with most of their games. The original Medieval introduced us to Siege Warfare, Rome 2 introduced a provincial region map system, Troy had a resource-based economy for the first time, but the fact is with every game we lose tons of features as well. And in today's video, from general speeches to beautifully and comically done agent action cutscenes, I'm going to cover my top five features that need to make a comeback in the next Total War game. There's a lot to cover here, so let's dive straight in. Coming in at number five, we've got battle and campaign effects. And really what I mean here is how what happens on the campaign affects battle gameplay and vice versa. Attila, for example, had the siege escalation system, which was just insanely cool and immersive at the time. For every few turns that you maintain a siege on an enemy settlement, you increase the destruction and degradation of the city itself so that when you decide to fight, the city's walls are already crumbling, buildings everywhere are on fire and the atmosphere is hot and destructive. And that's not all. I'll never forget when I first witnessed a raised city in Attila, the fire that engulfed the rest of the region, the charred remains of the settlement. Sure, you can raise cities in later games as well, but there isn't this same visual impact and I really, really miss that. Other features in this section include seasonal effects and how you could have battles in winter with snowy weather or in the hot sun and of course each of these affect troop abilities. You could have night battles which always lead to some spectacular engagements and more. I mean there are loads of mechanics and effects that CA made for previous games that tied what happened in the campaign to your battles and vice versa and a lot of them have been dropped. And let's be real, a lot of these could be developed even further. If you're besieging a city that has a section under development, a building under construction, why not represent that in the siege map? Or CA could also bring back random weather events like flooding or earthquakes, etc. that could make a physical appearance in the battles as well. There's so much that can be done here to make the campaign map and the battles feel more connected. And that's why this sits at number 5 on my list today. Moving on to number four, we have visible unit upgrades. And for me, this is a classic nostalgic mechanic that I think loads of players would want to see back in a future game. And I totally agree. Back in Medieval 2, you were able to upgrade the armor and weaponry of certain units so that while they stay the same unit in name, like militia units, as you upgrade their levels of armor, they not only got an increase in stats, they also changed in appearance to look like they were wearing heavier armor. And that was an incredibly immersive feature that had a major impact on campaign and battle gameplay. Now, granted, CA has implemented a version of this that I kind of like in Warhammer 3, in which you can upgrade certain units within the Chaos factions to higher tier versions of those units. But for me, that's just a mechanic that's been developed to replace spending money on them. It's not really investing in earlier tier infantry. It's just building up the ranks of what you have until you get better armies without needing to spend money, essentially. Whereas in Medieval 2, you had to invest money to give your existing units its better equipment. This wasn't a byproduct, a convenient bonus to winning battles as in Warhammer 3. This was a conscious decision. We've never really seen this mechanic come back in Total War since Medieval 2 and I think that's a massive shame. Beyond those large 20 or 30 unit rosters for factions, we really need a comeback in the way you care for and interact with these early initial units that you recruit. And this mechanic is exactly that. In modern titles, you can easily throw away units to auto-resolve and recruit new ones because of global recruitment or how cheap things can get, but back in Medieval 2, every unit counted and you could invest money to make those units perform and look better in battle. This was an amazing feature, and that's why it sits at number 4 today. Now, up next at number three, and maybe a little more controversial, is naval warfare. Ship on ship and ship on land battles that were pretty much made iconic by Empire, Napoleon, and Shogun II. Rome II and Attila did these as well, but didn't do them very well at all, and naval battles got dropped pretty much after that, so it's been absent from the series for a while now, but they need to make a comeback. 
Games like Troy and even the Warhammers have these huge bodies of water all over the map and no naval warfare, which might be fine for those games, but if an Empire 2 or Medieval 3 style game is next, we need to have this feature return. Loads of players say that CA never did it well, but that's just simply not true. Empire, Napoleon, Shogun 2 naval battles were pretty fun, and in fact, if they had a few more mechanics to them that were a bit more fleshed out, like shifting wind and weather patterns or a more dynamic AI, then they could have been absolutely perfect. The problem people have is with how naval battles were in Rome 2 or Attila. That's what they remember. And the real problem there is the engine. If a new game is made with naval battles in mind, it would 100% need a brand new engine that accurately and effectively did naval battles in a way that the AI can engage with properly. Otherwise, it would be a total shambles again. Despite the issues with naval battles in the series, they always come up in every conversation. They are seriously loved in the gunpowder games and for good reason, which is why CA should make a big comeback with naval battles again in the future, and hence why this sits on today's list at number 3. Coming in at second place today, we have independent armies, and this is a big feature, guys, that got stripped out early on in Total War in favor of making a limited number of character-required armies basically from Rome 2 onwards. In many ways, this did make the game more interesting. You had to pick and choose carefully which province to make a kind of military-focused province or where to cultivate a character to become a good general in the future, but for me, the cons outweigh the pros. Characterless armies allowed the player to raid and pillage enemy regions with ease. It allowed you to split up your large armies quickly, to tag team a city or ambush an army. It helped you build watchtowers and forts to see into fog of war areas and fortify important strategic locations. One of my favorite little features here was that when you had an army that did really well, the captain could be promoted to a general, basically creating a new character in your roster. I mean, it was brilliant and led to some real pride in your armies. The thing that characterless armies did really well was make campaigns a hell of a lot more dynamic and give the AI more room to recruit quickly to defend or attack depending on the situation. Instead of having smaller forces spread out to defend vital areas, what you have today is you're stuck with a handful of massive armies that have to traverse huge distances to get to where they need to, and that's a big pain. The old system was just plain more strategic, and in a strategy game, you need as much strategy as possible, which is why this sits at number two on this list today. Finally, the number one feature that needs to make a comeback in the next Total War is proper city development strategy. Having a provincial system did kind of make expanding your faction more strategic, and having a limited number of building slots basically works in tandem with that system to specialize each of your provinces, but in my opinion, it doesn't work as well as people think, and it makes the campaign gameplay more shallow than ever. What we really need is a regional rather than a provincial campaign map where each town can be upgraded to become a different style of settlement. You can have a merchant town to favor trading, you can have a fortified town to fend off an enemy invasion, or a farming town to cultivate agriculture, and each type of region of course affects what kind of town is best suited for it. And most of all, what we need here is more than just a handful of building slots in your cities, because that completely degrades the immersion of what a city is meant to be. I mean, seven or eight slots is better than most, but three or four basically makes a town worthless to conquer unless it's within an important province, which is why the system currently works, right? The problem is this provincial and limited building slot system neglects realism and strategy. You should be able to have as many customization options as possible with every settlement you conquer, with the main differences between each one being resources, strategic location, and more minor mechanics like local culture, area of recruitment, recruitment, etc. You should be able to develop a small town into a massive major metropolis over decades of turns, which currently just doesn't happen. This kind of gameplay was really last seen in Medieval 2, but to be honest, the original Medieval did it best. It's a system that is far more strategic than what we have now, which is why it sits at the top of the list today. Overall, there are so many features and mechanics out there that CA have decided to let go of over the years, but these are my absolute top 5 that I think should return to the series. 
Battle effects like siege escalation and night battles, visible unit upgrades as in Medieval 2, naval warfare that's done in a new engine and done really well, autonomous armies that can free roam without a general, and proper city development and strategic expansion. Some honorable mentions also before ending the video here, including general speeches and agent action cutscenes because they were just so cool at the time, a dynamic trait system depending on what your generals are doing, like if they're in a city with a library, they suddenly become more intelligent, or negative effects for sitting and doing nothing because they're just lazy. And finally, more fleshed out campaign mechanics such as food, population, sanitation, seasons, and technology trees that actually unlock new buildings and technologies rather than give stat buffs. And that's it for today guys, this is the third video in a series of top 5 lists in Total War I'm making, and I hope you enjoyed watching it and found it informative. If you did, do give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comments section below. Let me know if you agree with my top 5 comeback features list, or if you have other top 5 videos you want to see. Subscribe to the channel for more Total War content just like this, and thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.